Well hello everybody, it's Richard here and um, I thought today I'd um, show you one or two things I've, um, I've found uh, either in the press and also I've actually um, come across through eBay and uh, been doing some refurbishment work. But the f So the first item I thought was a bit of parochial stuff really was that in the Telegraph, um, I think it's called Telegraph's Men's Style magazine uh, which comes out um, ever so often. This is the, the Saturday uh, edition and um, for today being Saturday, there we go. But there was an interesting article on there about the um, raves from the grave, as it was of course. Restored vintage stereos are just the job for playing vinyl, uh, vinyl platters, it says here. And um, there's a beautiful picture of a Braun record, stereo record deck, or de I imagine it's a mono one actually, and uh, also a Decca. You can see the bottom picture there is a Decca. And there's a a company called Speedy 35 who set up a workshop repairing um, and restoring uh, old record players. No wonder the cost of buying second-hand uh, stereo and record decks is going up on eBay and I've noticed that. Um, recently you may have seen my posting of the Dual uh, 500 series um, and uh, how I refurbished that. I'll just turn the radio down a second. Um, and uh, how well and how good that particular record deck was. So much so uh, that I actually decided to try and purchase one for myself. And lo and behold, I found that every time I was putting a bid on there in the region of about £40 maximum, because that's all I think decks are really worth in the true sense of the word, um, I was being outbid. They were going for 50 up to £80. So something struck me. OK, well, they're the ones that are working what's the cost going for the ones that aren't working that need repair and lo and behold it's a much more reasonable price and so um, I actually put a bid on um, with a maximum price I think it's still at 40 quid and I've actually won three of them so um, so really basically an investment of I think it around about 90 pounds and my intention is that I will then refurbish them and put them back on the market probably hang on to one of those the better of the three probably and uh, make some money out of it I mean there's nothing wrong in that that's that's what the market uh, <laughs> the the market environments are like and uh, uh, but people are prepared to pay as much as that for a good record deck then so be it I mean I have made money before on some of the things I've sold you've probably seen some of those passing through the various broadcast and viewers have actually made comments about them so that's good news so to start that process off I've actually purchased uh, say three and I've actually started working on one and that's the dual uh, 505-2 series which I think comes from the whole range that were produced back in 1970s. This one dates from 1973. I know that because the actual rubber platter mat has actually got it stamped on the back So, and also looking at some of the um, mechanical bits inside uh, that certainly leads me to believe that by the components on the um, a circuit board as well so um, so I was looking for a date and these machines are very well made they're actually made of carbon so the carbon fiber for the tone arm and some of the other parts actually are um, well produced and they're very simple decks I mean they really are very simple decks they have the most wonderful type of um, they've got to, well, I think it's a orthothon uh, cartridge in some of them some of them have their own dual which basically is an orthothon anyway uh, the sort of narrower one this is one of the narrower types and I'll show you that um, and uh, they do work very well. They also have a uh, pitch control. Most of the pitch control um, belts normally normally rot away and so does some of the, um, the drive belts as well. So some of those I've got I think just need some new drive belts and a bit of cosmetic tarting up. This one wasn't working altogether. I, mean, I think it had been dropped. There was quite a bit of damage but I have actually repaired it and it's successfully playing so we'll do a bit of that probably in a successive video uh, as um, it would be difficult to do everything one handed as you know. So but and I, and um, so so that's that bit. Um, I'd like to also thank everyone for their wonderful comments they've been making. The last few videos particularly around the Piccadilly Dance Orchestra uh, that I showed uh, those who are interested in 1930s 1920s 1940s dance band we did have a fantastic time up in London and um, you know I have to say thank you to Ray Pallet from Memory Lane 
and uh, all the people that were there. It was great to meet new people, some of the people I did know, friends uh, who are YouTubers as well, and we had a smashing time. And I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did, to be honest. I thought I was going a bit skeptical. It wasn't until Johnny Holmes, who is a YouTube um, uh, fan and also puts broadcast on, persuaded me in our, in our emails, uh, exchanges, that I decided to go up to London for the day. It was the end of the Paralympics. It was the Saturday before the end, and I was really impressed actually with the amount of uh, bonhomie that was going on there was a lots of people there going to Stratford on the tube um, though I wasn't going that way but just generally speaking there was like an uplift at weekends you know it was there was lots of the trains were full but it was not overcrowded and it was a really great time I thoroughly enjoyed my time there just being a part of the atmosphere and um, I mean I do travel through London quite a bit with my job on occasions and uh, this was definitely a day to remember and uh, so it was all part of that wonderful Paralympic Olympic experience that we've had had in this country over the last uh, few months and weeks and it's been fantastic so I'd just like to say thank you to Ray and all the people in memory lane and all the people I met uh, and um, so um, and I hope to see you all very soon if you're not contacting me through Facebook so brilliant and uh, great stuff and it really makes you feel good the other thing that makes you feel good is that the weather today is very nice we're expecting to have cyclone Nadine hitting us tomorrow and uh, my um, I'm, my friend Thomas Shagenecker, who's on the BBC, is saying that this is coming our way. So I'm um, not looking forward to that one very much. But I'm hoping that, um, you know, perhaps it might pass over as quickly as it comes. And uh, But today the sun is really, really nice out there. It's quite a cool breeze. I went running this morning and you certainly need to wear a long sleeved running uh, top. Otherwise you're definitely going to suffer with a bit of frost and my fingers were feeling a bit cold by the end of it. Anyway, I waffle on. I'm sorry to waffle on for those that don't like my waffle, but there you go. Let's get back to, down to business. I'm going to take Mr. Panasonic off his perch and show you what, um, what's going on this way. And then I'm going to stop the video and I'll have to turn it over and make a second one because I just can't do things to, um, in one hand, as I say. So I'm going to show you about that. So let's just, hopefully I won't switch him off too soon here. I've had, I keep saying that, but there we go. Just bear with me a few minutes. Talk amongst yourselves, as they say. Right, now this is the dual uh, record deck uh, 5052, I think it is, this one. And um, it, um, it came, this is the photograph of it that was put onto eBay. And as you can see, um, it looks a bit dusty there um, from the actual seller, um, who was a great guy. I think his name was Paul. Um, it was delivered by UPS in a in a in a in good state actually. So and the total cost was thirty one pounds. So um, and so thirty one quid. I thought it wasn't too bad actually. Um, and it was said for parts or not working. And I think it says I think it says cosmetically okay. Uh, and the lid you know the lid won't stay up. Well, there's a reason for that because one of the hinges is broken. Uh, you know so and the fact that it's actually you know it, it was working but it isn't now type of thing so that was the challenge for me so it I mean all these decks come with this very nice uh, aluminium lightweight aluminium record deck as you can see they have a, a strode effect which you can use with a, a light down the side there and then set they don't have a built-in strode arrangement on these like unlike my Hitachi and the techniques that I've got they tend to do that um, and uh, so you can adjust the fluctuation in current you know uh, and the cycles there so but I really quite like these they're quite sturdy this was quite in quite a mucky state I've given this a bit of a wash and clean uh, in the sink so that's all come all the muck has come out the side here so that's that bit of it um, and then the un this is the underside now the bit that had actually fallen off inside was in fact um, the PCB board, this board here, the circuit board. Now on the other ones I've had there's been a cover on this, this one doesn't have a cover um, and it had completely fallen off, fallen away which meant that the uh, micro switch here which turns the thing on and off uh, would have disengaged from the um, from the mechanism and of course it won't work so once I'd stuck it back, I just used some simple boss stick here because these lugs had come loose I think probably had been stored in a loft or something because they'd clearly moved out 
uh, once I'd stuck it back and I tested it, first of all, first thing I should say is I tested that the fuse hadn't gone. I've been caught out before now and trying to find a very complicated fault with something and it's purely been the fuse has blown and once you've tracked it back then that's okay. I checked the fuse, that's, there was connectivity with the fuse, there was no problem there. Um, it was quite mucky underneath I have to say and, it, and um, it's got this rather nice wood, dark wood effect here. Um, though it is wood, though it's um, not solid wood, it's, it is wood, um, and um, that was quite mucky too. They're quite easy to repair these machines, I have to say, perhaps I shouldn't say that or I won't be getting any more on eBay, but they are quite simple when you come to it. Um, setting up is important afterwards, which we'll go through when I get that far. But um, So that's the underside really. Um, it uh, came with RCA leads here. Um, and uh, and that's okay. I've disconnected that, and it also comes with a with a ground lead as well, which you can connect up to um, a ground. I'll put a new lead on this because this one had come off. So all I've done is I've just used a car connector uh, and then cut out the sink center, so it's got like a horseshoe effect there, and then and then crimped it. So that will be okay. Um, as I say, the the hinge brackets here, one of these is actually, I can't really show you, it's broken, I've got to repair there. Um, and it comes with a, oh, I've got it in the house, a very nice Perspex lid, which isn't too bad. I mean, they all suffer with people putting things on top and scratching them, unless you're very, very lucky. And uh, so what I intend to do this afternoon is um, is actually just re-grease all these. I've taken most of the grease off and I'm going to re-grease them because uh, it all goes a bit gunky after a while. And then the centre piece, which this is where the um, the uh, belt fits through. Uh, I'm going to re-grease that. I've taken all the old mucky stuff out and this fits into, the, um, if you think this is, this is upside down, this fits into the, the underside here and fits, if you look at the other way up the way, and fits into there and uh, allows the turntable to turn freely. Anyway, so that's part one really of the underside of the Joule 505 uh, part up uh, dash two I think it's called and uh, I'll speak to you all very, very soon.